straight into it with this um, article in The Telegraph, Alex. Mm -hmm. BBC denies coverage of Princess Kate's cancer diagnosis was excessive and insensitive. Why are they having to say this? Yeah, so the Telegraph are reporting that kind of w when the news broke that the BBC had kind of been speaking to people behind the scenes, they'd kind of been pr kind of leaking stories yeah. that she may have cancer and a lot of people felt that like they went too far, you know, she does have a family, it's a very sensitive topic um, and I think people felt that they didn't get the balance right about, about the story basically, yeah. That they went over the top on it. Do you think mm. that they did, Nikki? Well, it was very difficult to get the balance right, wasn't it? Because mm. everybody was gunning for knowledge. There were so many conspiracy theories on the internet, mm. social media was rife with... Uh, theories and people were desperate to find out what had happened and then basically the BBC delivered and then they were in trouble for it so I mean I, I, it, I this really is a problem with the viewers for me it's not the problem with the station. Interesting so you think people shouldn't bother complaining about such a thing well, especially no, when yeah. it's all over the tabloids well, exactly. anyway. They, I mean people were prominent and they wanted to know and then they find out and then they feel bad because it was something so terrible but well, that's the thing you can't win right everyone's saying well why don't we know anything and then the moment they find out they're yeah. saying that actually like they yeah. went too far it's like exactly. which which one do you want, you know? Yeah. Like. So I think the BBC received around 100 complaints, but they stood firm behind their coverage, saying, uh, we broadcast in full the highly personal video message. Um, our coverage reflected the significance of the story and the outpouring of support for the princess. I mean, some people were saying it was like Princess uh, Diana had died. It was mm. the same sort of, mm. you know, emotional, intense coverage. But as you said, people for weeks were demanding clarity mm. on what was going on. Worse on TikTok, that's for sure. Absolutely. It was bad on socials. I think it's interesting because I think a lot of people feel like she was pushed into that announcement yeah. early. Maybe she wasn't ready, you know, and actually I think the public need to appreciate that because everyone was saying, where is she, where is she? Mm. They then cannot moan when there's a video and then the, the people still to this day are saying, is it her in the video? Yeah, there's still like, conspiracy guys, grip. There It's is, definitely her yeah. in the video. Like, who do you think it is? Yeah, you know, but I mean, the, the problem for the royal family is that they lost control of the narrative and, and the PR department does not understand social media. Yeah. I mean, a, a big part of your strategy when something you don't want to disclose something is to get on top of rumours, actually. You know, you have to get on Reddit, you have to get on social, you have to get on TikTok. Uh, you need people posting, uh, maybe not obviously, but you need people to direct the conversation with facts. And they just, it just isn't, they just don't have it. I don't know what's going on there. I think the biggest problem, actually, for the royals is that the PR, PR traditionally the PR department has always been people that are very pro-monarchy, people that have been quite close, closely connected to the royals. But actually what they need is some people that are just at the top of their game that are actually Republicans, mm. people that can think about the yeah. worst possible comments that are going to come approach, yeah. and work from that side mm. forward. Mm.